<laughs> Welcome back to the Wizards Den episode 9 with the Disney Family Man host of Citrus Corner, Mr. George of the Jungle. <laughs> well, I haven't oh, heard I that did. in a I'm doing good. I haven't heard that since grade school. <laughs> It brought back some old memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So more like vin- more George. like more like more like vintage. <laughs> Vin <laughs> exactly. Vintage memories from the 1980s. <laughs> oh, where can everyone find you, George? Well, you can find me on my own YouTube channel, Disney Family Man 23. You can interact with me on Twitter at Disney George. And of course, you'll find me on Orange Grove 55's channel with Citrus Corner with a lot of sweet, juicy, but yet sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Sticky, sticky. And you just went to Disney World, didn't you? I did. I did. I just got back. I actually did a Disneyland, Disney World, and my very first ever Universal uh, vacation, all in one little tight compact vacation <laughs> that spanned it's over tight, a, a whole month that's the same it was like a month Woo-wee. so which one was your favorite out of all three on your trip oh boy um it was honestly each part had its own very distinctive uniqueness to it so i can't really say that one was better than the other there were things that i did at disneyland that made it an awesome trip uh, being at Disney World again for the umpteenth time. I can't even count on my <laughs> fingers of how many times I've been to Disney World. Um, and then, of course, my first time at Universal experiencing all their their rides and the lay of the land. And I do have to say, being at Universal, is it's a very different feel than Disney. Like, they're two totally different oh, beasts. It is. I know, right? Isn't it insane? Insane. It's crazy. <laughs> So, what did you do at Disneyland? So, Disneyland. Family, right? No, it was just me. It was a just a solo trip. Um, oh, just you? Yes. Oh, but you met me. with the Orange Grove crew. Yeah. So, I uh, met with uh, OG for uh, one day. Uh, Mr. Vash Sky, host of Freshly Squeeze, was able there, to be there for a few days. And then I got to hang out with my uh, friend Mindy. Oh, Mindy from the Grand Circle Tour. Yes. Yep, used to be. Well, and so. you, you went to Knott's, right? Too? I did. So that was unexpected. Uh, I was not planning on going to Knott's. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Vasky and his family surprised me. They picked me up at uh, John Wayne Airport, uh, threw mm-hmm. my luggage in the back of their car, and said, we're taking you to Knott's. And I'm like, okay. Wow, and that's your first time, right? That was my first time. Like, I had no experience whatsoever. I didn't even know even the backstory of Knots. So I was like, (laughs) I was, yeah. What did you think? You have to give us all your Knots thoughts. The (laughs) Knots thoughts. Um, (laughs) So for me, it's, it has that very quaint, traditional, like all American amusement park. It didn't have like the high end caliber that Disney has, but it has some attributes to them that Disney used to have that doesn't have. Like I love like the stage shows and the the mm-hmm. performers walking around in character, interacting with the guests. Mm-hmm. It's like everywhere you look, there's something to do, and and I love that. Yeah, they have so much entertainment. It's insane. And they have a nice collection of rides. They do. What what you get to go on? I got to go on, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher these names because I've only been there once. So I, I usually have like <laughs> Vash Sky, you know, helping me out with the names. Um, <laughs> it was the the wooden roller coaster. Ghost Rider. That's a lot of yes. people's favorite. Yes. That one was my all-time favorite. I loved riding that, especially at night. At night, it's a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. Very smooth, huh? Because they just, well, they're not just, but recently they retracted that one. So it should, I hope it was very smooth still. 
Yeah, I'm not sure, but I mean, it was wild. It was a wild ride and uh, puts a whole new meaning and nothing against Big Thunder, but that was really the wildest ride in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> of course, a ghost is a, a ghost is a haul in your train. <laughs> yeah. Did you get off, yeah, um, the Calico Mine Ride? The Calico Mine, mine Ride, I did get to go on. That was very different. Um, I liked it though, but it, it, again, it had that old traditional where you look at those animatronics and you think, okay, you could definitely mm -hmm. tell these are outdated animatronics, but that's what makes it great. It, that's what makes it that, Very that classic feel. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and how about the log ride? Gotta get on the yes. log ride. Yes, I, I did go on the log ride. And again, I love the, the old fashioned traditional uh, animatronics. It had a very subtle storyline to it, not based off of anything, not based off of a movie or a show, but like you can mm -hmm. tell what the the message they were coming across as within the within the ride. Did you just go on the train? The train was a very interesting experience. Um, I don't I don't recall doing the train. I can't remember doing the train. No, I don't think I did yes, the train. It is you know, this big train that goes around the park, almost like the, the Grand Circle Tour Railroad, but this one just has, like, one stop. It goes around a little bit of the park. Then halfway through, these robbers come on your train and try to rob you. And it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's interesting. It's like interesting. a show in the train. And then you get, it just goes around the park, but then it also uses this one part, and then they, the robbers come and say, excuse me, we're taking over this train. And then they put your hands up. It's so cool. That is cool. Um, yeah, I got to see a lot of the like the live shows, the live performances, mm -hmm. the bands, you know, the, the entertainment. You know, love being by the, you know, especially at night where they have that big fire pit. You know, they have a, you know, the fire and it's oh, like yes, sit, and not that's summer really cool. Nights. Yes. And did you they have that little backyard games there? Did you get did you guys play? No, I didn't play any of the games, but I just sat I just sat back and watched. I loved the atmosphere. I loved, mm -hmm. you know, seeing, you know, the kids have fun, the families, you know, the food was really good. I loved the food. The food. Come back during the Boys and Bay Festival and you'll be mind blown. Mind uh, blown, I George. <laughs> I definitely want to make my way back to Knott's. It was definitely an experience. There was a lot that I didn't get to experience, but I, I did see a lot, but I do want to go back and, um, Oh, I got to experience the, the birdcage theater, um, with some of their like type of, um, vaudeville cabaret type of performances. Mm -hmm. Did you eat at the barbecue place? I think so. Fireman's barbecue right across from there. It's so good. I, I think we did. We did eat some sort of barbecue. I don't know if that's the exact one you're talking about, but I know that we did uh, stop and get some barbecue. Ooh. Barbecue is fantastic over there. Fantastic, man. And then what do you think of the theming on, like, compared to other, I'd say, other regional parks? I liked how it had that, believe it or not, it was like one big giant, frontier land rather than it just be a land know, like yeah, the whole it's park so it has like that that wild west type of old frontier vibe to it i i actually love that but then there's the other part of the the uh the park that where you just have like a lot of the uh newer edition steel roller coasters you know and then they have like we walked by it briefly i didn't get to go in it fully but like they have the look the snoopy section like towards the oh, one yeah. side of the park Come back during the holidays and Camp Snoopy's most decked out place. It's so gorgeous at nighttime. You got to come back during the holidays. It's I'm, I'm going to have to come back out to California in general for the holidays because I've I've been out there for Halloween, but I have not been out there for Christmas. Speaking of California, when are you coming back? When are you coming back, George? Uh, well, I'm coming back actually in... September, but I'm coming out for the D23. expo. D23. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you gonna? You're going to? You're going to the expo? Are you going to Disney one of those I am. days? Or just yeah, yeah, yes. I'm. I'm going to the expo. <laughs> uh, God which help me. <laughs> day, which day are you going to Disney? I'm sorry. Which day are you going to Disney? All of them? After the expo or 
Um, probably a couple before and then a couple after, because I'm also going to uh, Oogie Boogie Bash. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. Which again, so, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't actually planned after the fact that they made the announcement of the dates for Oogie mm-hmm. Boogie Bash. It kind of coincide with my dates for the expo and i thought well i'll try for a ticket so <laughs> that ended up turning out well wow so you will be at a disney park on the weekend uh n- no no just the expo on the weekend oh just the expo on the weekend yeah. gotcha okay are you excited for this d23 expo i'm actually very optimistic about it i think that you know, after the hiatus of everything with uh, the pandy, the shutdown and everything, Disney trying to get back, you know, up on its feet. And, you know, no real news, you know, has come out except for the projects that were already in motion prior to 2020. Mm-hmm. So I would love to see, and especially since, you know, the expo is was delayed heavily. You know, we were supposed to have one technically last year, but it, it went through another you know, whole, whole year. So I'm really excited to hear some of the park news that they have to offer, especially since that they just, um, made a uh, big financial jump with their quarterly earnings and, uh, you know, investing $6 billion. So I'm, and especially since they made that announcement prior to the expo, is that mean that they're going to dust some things off, off the shelves and, you know, bring them to the expo. I'm, I'm very optimistic and trying to stay positive on it. Yeah. Yeah. Six billion dollars is definitely a welcoming sign. What do you want? Cause I know you're talking, you're going on later today with a Mr. Vash guy to talk about Dino land. What, yes. what do you think should become the Dino land? Oh boy. Well, <laughs> he and I were talking about this, for quite some time and there's always a notion especially at Walt Disney World that they rotate investment in the parks so you know Magic Kingdom is pretty much a given it's safe there's there's so much to do they're adding Tron Epcot is mm-hmm. going through the, it's overhaul now um, it just opened uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind they previously opened Ratatouille and uh Hollywood Studios had Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge, along with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. So, you you know, Animal Kingdom hasn't gotten too much love since Pandora back in 2017. So, you know, we feel that that's the park that it's, you know, going to, you know, have uh, the spotlight on it, so to speak. So, my personal opinion, I really think, especially to save money is to um, possibly add, like, Zootopia. Zootopia. Oh, my goodness, I'm hearing myself. Um, <laughs> Zoot- so is that what you want, or is that what you think is just the most pref- preferred, or most likely, sorry? Well, I think, honestly, now that Joe Rody is out of the picture as far as spearheading the park of what Animal Kingdom is supposed to be moving forward and Disney kind of being on this uh, IP frenzy, I think that it's only fitting that you would have, you know, a film about animals living in a kind of human nature world. So I think that it would tie in well, I think if they do it if they do it properly in Animal Kingdom. And, you know, just to see something new, I'd be excited for it. Yeah. I mean, I really like the movie Zootopia. But I was surprised to see a lot of people, at least online, weren't excited for the prospect of Zootopia coming uh, to Animal Kingdom. So that's why I was like, and man. Yet, and, yet when it, and, man yet, and yet, if it was to be built and opened, that line would be so jam-packed of people. And it's probably the same yeah, people yeah, that complain yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I had the same thought that you thought, Jordan. I'm like, you know, hey, animals <laughs> movie. <laughs> it seems like a, a great fit. But um, people said put it in Hollywood Studios. I was like, huh? How come? Um, but then I guess I figured because I guess a movie. But you know, and especially since think- they're building Zootopia over in Shanghai, so it'll kind of be less amount of money for them to just do a duplicate. 
Exactly. They already designed it so it's ready to go. And it kind of, it's, it's not the biggest land, and Dino Land's not the biggest land, so I feel like it's a nice little plot, therefore. I think it'll look pretty cool. Uh, animal city in an animal kingdom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but would you want that? Or, and wait, would you want, that means dinosaur would go, or would it be rethemed? Well, this is probably going to be the most unpopular opinion, and I'll probably get heat on this later, but I don't care. <laughs> but <laughs> cancel George. <laughs> <laughs> I I I do like dinosaur if they were to keep it but I think it would be you know just to have a single dino attraction it would just kind of stick out like a sore thumb and me personally mm -hmm. I would kind of redo all of dino land not just Chester and Hester's dino rama I would take out the bone yard and honestly I would retheme dinosaur and actually uh Vash asked me what would you put in there and honestly, with that type of ride mechanism and everything, how it kind of takes you on a bumpy, wild expedition ride, I thought, well, if you're going to theme something to Zootopia, why not it be themed that uh, Flash, the 100-yard dash, takes you on a driving oh, yeah. course? <laughs> now it's super cool. Because you know? he is quite the fast driver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That would be, yeah, that would be very cool. So would you want them to, so you want them, you'd want them to retheme and not completely demolish it with a new ride system, but just retheme. Yeah, I think dinosaur. just, I, and I think honestly, Disney would do that anyway, just for saving money purposes. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it would be the easy route. Um, and I do love the, the, the type of ride system because it works at Indiana Jones. You know, if I had to pick and choose, mm -hmm. I'd choose Indiana Jones over Dinosaur any day. <laughs> Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> oh man. So, but yeah, that's a. So yeah, but still, see, that's the thing. Animal Kingdom has what? Let's see. Nine rides, right? Nine ish rides. Uh, if you're lucky. Um, <laughs> one, <laughs> two, three. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven. Two. Seven, I think. Seven. Yeah. Mm. See, and that's what I'm saying. I've been saying, and I think I said on your guys' chat, this replacing, removing and replacing, I understand Dino Land is kind of like old and like, not relevant. But after that, this removing and replacing uh, rides that have a park that has only seven of them is like not cool. You should only add additions, not, you know, remove and right. replace. Right. I things. think. I think, terrible. yeah, I think after they do something with Dino Land, there's probably going to be like three different kind of phases, I feel, for Animal Kingdom, that they're going to redo Dino Land. Once mm -hmm. they see the success for Avatar coming out with the, the sequel um, mm -hmm. in December, and then three more sequels after it, they'll expand mm -hmm. on Pandora, um, because Disney actually wanted to do that. But James Cameron's the one that actually told them, no, I have more movies coming out. Just wait. You'll have more inspiration for it. Then I feel like after that point, Disney is going to have to expand its development with with going out from what's already in the park and expand further. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to add like another land or something for Animal Kingdom. But I think that's going to come later after Dino Land and after Pandora. Yeah, because, you know, it's funny, you know, you, the blessing of the size, but at all the parks, except maybe Magic Kingdom, they're busy retheming and replacing, you know, Mickey and Minnie's took over a great movie ride. It's funny this place to build it on Mickey and Minnie's out in the parking lot or somewhere. And uh, it's weird to me, weird to me how they continue to do that over there. And yet over and I will here. have to <laughs> say, though, I will have to say, though, I do like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I just wish that they could have put it in somewhere differently where they did not have to take out the great movie ride. That movie was such a, yeah, that exactly. ride was such a great feature to Hollywood yeah. studios. And Hollywood studios, you know, they have so much space out there to do that. But they said, no, 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 no. Bye bye. Great movie ride. But bye. But that's, that are making that's, and that's the frustrating part with Walt Disney world. They constantly say, 
you know, they have the blessing of size and they do, they mm -hmm. have so much room, but yet there's no projects being de development, uh, developed for that. It's like, they're just constantly mm -hmm. taking stuff out and replacing it. It's like, utilize that room, utilize that space. Exactly. Cause, uh, our Mickey and Winnie's over here in Disneyland is taking out nothing. Size. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. Oh, and I'm sorry. And I, I'm sorry. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is supposed to be in Toontown. I'm sorry. It does not fit in the Chinese theater. I, I'm sorry. I, I think so. I mean, I mean, come on. It's Mickey's home. It's Mickey's land. Yeah. I think perfect location. Perfect location. <laughs> but I can, I understand. Hopefully, DC gets a nice family dark ride e ticket like that soon. But Mickey I would Minnie's, love oh, if can, if something oh. were to come in for DCA. And they want to do expand more upon uh, Pixar Pier going around Paradise Gardens. I would love to see a dark ride uh, inspired by Coco. Um, yeah. Coco, I've been asking for that. Or uh, I want I want I want a, I want a haunted mansion. No, I want a Mystic Manor and Kanto in there somewhere. Oh, I just know where to put it. But I want I, come on, you go in. Like Mystic Man, track this vehicle, right? And then you go in each of the characters' rooms, and that's just the ride. Ah, so cool. It'll be so cool. The rooms are now, so I elaborate. Have to, now, I have to ask you. This is probably part of the unpopular opinion. Um, I actually mm -hmm. brought this up when I did a recording with... Uh, 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 our boy Sean ranking the mouse. And I think he, I, it looked like he was about to crap himself when I said this, but <laughs> that I said sooner or later, do you feel that the little mermaid attraction should be taken out for the purpose of that whole section could just become Pixar where you could actually add something of, or, uh, of like Coco or, or something of that nature. For me, I don't mind the Little Mermaid being in DCA, but I just feel that the placement of where it's at is kind of, it's like Mike and Solly over at Hollywood Land. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as long as they replace it with something long and a good quality dark ride, then you know what? Fine with me because, uh, yeah, I don't have any emotional attachment to it. It's something nice to get cool, uh, get cool when it's hot outside, or if you just want to relax for a little bit. Yeah. So as long as they replace it with something, some of substantial goodness or better, all for it. Take out Sky School, Mermaid, and make a nice couple of good dark rides, family dark rides that you know will really eat up those crowds and really enhance that section of the. Paradise Gardens Park. <laughs> I mean, me personally, and I know that they probably won't because DCA already lost a Bugs Land, so they're already kind of short mm -hmm. on, like, younger kid rides and everything, I'd say, honestly. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it's probably the unpopular opinion. Change the Little Mermaid, take out Sky Skull, take out Jumpin' Jellyfish, take out the, the Zephyr, mm -hmm. and just, like, just do, like, a whole complete, like, redo of that section of the pier. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And then you've got to take out Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. Yeah, exactly. That could um, be like I'm kind of like I'm kind of on I'm kind of on the fence with Silly Symphony Swings. I know that that would be sitting there all by its lonesome self, but I actually enjoy the, the the swings. It was always one of my favorite type of rides going to an amusement park. But I mean, if it does happen to go with the slate and just to bring something new, then, you know, I'd be probably be OK with it. Yeah, see, I actually will get motion sickness on that one, but so I haven't ever been on it. But I like it because uh, I wouldn't mind if it stays either because I, I, it is more, I guess, it's more Disney than jumping jellyfish or yeah, going Zephyr or something like that. Because you know, Mickey's up there doing his little thing, and there's Disney music. So if they kept that one. I'd be okay well, and honestly, if they, like, and really, honestly, if they like were to keep middle. that ride, what they could do to kind of retheme it to Pixar, and I forget who I, I don't know if I mentioned it to OG or not, but it was somebody that they could transform that in for uh, to be up. 
So the whole entire platform would be the house with the balloons on top. And then the seats oh, you yeah. sit in, and then the seats you sit in would be designed to look like wilderness explorer packs. <laughs> that would be cool. Actually, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I, I like that. Okay, Imagineer George. Okay. <laughs> like, but Maybe, you know, maybe we'll get a surprise D23 announcement. Something happened in that area. That would be we quite might. nice, huh? We might. With the $6 billion. Six billion. Six billion. billion. I mean, that is, if you break that down, that would be the equivalence of them building 12 Pandoras. Mm -hmm. And six Star Wars Galaxy's Edges. Yeah. Yeah. A lot to do with so, that. So, you know. <laughs> Something is a model or something that something's going to be announced at D23 and there's going to be a whole little model for it. Miss Tiana. Mm -hmm. Are you excited for Miss Tiana? Here's my thing with that. I am curious to see what they're going to say for that because I've been reading a lot of articles based off of the announcements of what's going to be at D23 and what have you. Mm -hmm. And coming up to this point, they keep on using the term behind the scenes for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. They've been using that for the past two years now. I don't want to hear <laughs> behind the scenes. I want, to I want them to say, we're going to give you a sneak peek of the ride through of the attraction when they're using the term behind the scenes they're taking us through like these commentary sit down round table q a uh based off of the origins of new orleans which is all good and dandy but i want to know about the ride i don't <laughs> you know i want to know like what is the storyline of the ride what are some of the scenes what are are we going to be getting a lot more uh animatronics is it going to be a lot of special effects that's the stuff i'm interested in mm. are you a little nervous about this i get a little nervous is it is it, are you, is it rough on your feathers or do you not care or do you just like ah positivity i got this it's gonna be great uh, this this one, I yeah, I am apprehensive about because it this is like the one ride where we're not clear on anything, and it's been in development mm -hmm. supposedly for two years. It's like I want to yeah. know more, but we're not getting anything. So I mean, were they waiting for the expo? Were they? We'll see. But I have to say that I've I've spoken about this on Orange Grove Fifty Five that if we don't get anything about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, and the only thing that we get is just more on the customs and traditions of New Orleans, I can't really say if this is actually going to come to fruition. Even though they gave us a but, date of it but, opening but, in 2024. But it's supposed to be open late 2024. It yeah. has to happen now. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Things happen, you know. <laughs> you know if, if someone were to... If someone were to say to me back in 2018, 2019, that the Disney parks would be closed, especially Disneyland, for over a year, I'd be like, you're crazy. <laughs> That'll yeah, never I, I happen. Mean, Disney, walking, Disney never, you know, Disney never closes, you know, but it happened, you know, it, so anything could happen from this point on up into the expo, but I am... Very curious to know, because as I said, because of the earnings call and mm -hmm. it was a good quarter and they're investing six billion dollars and they made those announcements prior to the expo. I think that's I, I think that they kind of have some things up their sleeves that they want to announce. And being that they kind of got that green light for that six billion, I'm, I'm safe to say mm -hmm. that we're going to hear a lot of stuff, even just beyond Tiana's Bayou Adventure and the, and I know that they're going to give us an opening date for Tron. We're going to get a reopening date for Fantasmic. Um, but I think it's going to be more than just announcing of dates when things are going to be opened. Mm, I hope so. Because we so far what only got still what, a couple of pieces of concept art for that thing. Huh? That's a very mysterious. Serious, George. Very yeah. Serious. Yeah. Again, by now we would have more information. I mean, we do know that the ride system obviously is going to be a log ride. You know, it's going to have the same route mm -hmm. as Splash Mountain does currently right now. But as I said, I want to know 
more on the backstory. I want to know about what characters we're going to see. I want to know if is it going to be audio animatronics? Is it going to be LED screens? Is there going to be special effects? Is I don't know how that because that they set this after the fact the movie the movie took place. I was really anticipating that while you're climbing that last hill to do the drop, you'd get the you get bump, friends bump, of the bump, other bump, side. Bump, bump, bump. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, that's I mean hello. <laughs> See, missed that's opportunity. Why I'm a, missed opportunity. That's why I know. I'm, I'm a bit nervous because I don't know what, a, like, you know, if it's after the movie, I don't, you know, it's hard to know to expect because it's after the movies. So you don't know what's, what, what happens after the movies. I'm yeah. like, I'm nervous. No. Is original music? Then I'm like, now, I like their music. I like Smash right. Mountain's music. You can't do original music. What if it sucks? You know? Oh, exactly. I'm nervous, yeah. George. Like, I'm like, shaking my boots. Well, here's the thing. When I think of Princess and the Frog, the first thing that comes to my mind is the soundtrack. I absolutely yeah. love the soundtrack. It it's one of one of the I'm not going to say it's the best Disney soundtracks, but I mean it's it's probably part of my top 10. Um so but I mean they have very catchy tunes and everything. So yeah, so if these are going to be songs that are going to take place after you know, it's like, yeah, is it going to be like these cheesy, corny, little like bubblegum type songs that like no one will <laughs> care about after the ride is over? Or is it but it does make me wonder, because aren't they supposed to make a Princess and the Frog l mini series? Yeah. yeah, that was supposed to. Yeah, so I, I wonder. Like OK, OK, well, then that would make sense because you would have the show. And then you would have yeah, the, the ride. ride. So I'm wondering, because they are going to have segments about Disney Plus. So I wonder if they're going to kind of combine them where they make the announcement for the Disney Plus panel of something new mm -hmm. with Tiana. And then that'll kind of make sense about what they're going to do for the ride. I hope so. Oh, I just feel like they're going to fuck it up. <laughs> See, but me, I know that they like to do original stories like after the movie and after that, but I'm a traditionalist. I love going into a ride where it's actually based on the movie. Like when I watched mm -hmm. the uh, the ride like through. The South. Yeah, like when I watched the ride through of uh, Beauty and the Beast at Tokyo, mm -hmm. um, that I loved how it takes you through the scenes of the movie. You know, I again mm -hmm. call me a traditionalist, but that's more me. I would rather go on a ride where it's like I, I'm moving through the scenes of the movie. Because then it's also no to everybody. It's very familiar to everybody. Like, oh, I like that part. Oh, that's my favorite scene, and it's very familiar. Yes. So it makes me yes. want again. And instead of new stuff, you're like, oh, what's this? You know. I don't also, know. I don't but, know. <laughs> but also the other thing that was concerning me from the very get-go when they first made this announcement, Tiana's Bayou Adventure would fit so well in Disneyland. It's just adjacent to mm -hmm. New Orleans Square. They can transform an extension of New Orleans Square. It fits perfectly. Pardon my French. How in the hell is this ride going to fit in with the new <laughs> <U> Frontier? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> right. Maybe they're gonna use the six billion to re uh, reshape the whole land over there. Because <laughs> boy, oh boy, it's got like a sore thumb. It's like maybe change the song instead of going down the bayou, they could change it going down to Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy, what do you think of that name, Tiana's Bayou Adventure? <sighs> I mean, me personally, I would have used that as like a part of like a prologue title. Like I still would have named yeah, it Splash. Like, Splash like I would have named Mountain. it Splash Mountain Tiana's oh. Bayou Adventure. There you go. You have like, the whole thing. Hello. That's what, uh, that's what, uh, who, who was on the channel and said that? Uh, oh, yes. That's what Theme Park Casual said. So, yeah. Oh, no. It's like, it's like that's it. It's just, just call it because it also would fit in. Because they also called it the Magic Kingdom Mountain Range. So it was always titled mm -hmm. with that for Big Thunder, uh, Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain, and Splash Mountain. They had the Triple Mountain. So now you're going to have Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It just doesn't... 
Uh, mm. I don't know. Like, as I said, if you wanted to add that, let that be like a, a tagline. I would have just kept it Splash Mountain. Exactly. And uh, at Disneyland, you know, you have the mountain range of the Matterhorn, Thunder, Space, and Splash. But, but George, the name Splash Mountain is racist. <laughs> I uh, And this is what a lot of people <laughs> have to understand. Technically... The, the name Splash Mountain has nothing to do with Song of the South. It was titled after the movie Splash when Michael Eisner wanted to well, promote Tom the Ray. movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's racist, George. It's, it's racist. You're not it's, telling you. It's racist. It's, you can't it's name racist. it that. It's racist. No, no, Just like every single scene of the ride about the animals is racist as well. They're all racist, George. They're all very racist. It's... <laughs> <laughs> and then someone it's like, else so, says, so I wonder now, woke. are they going to, so now are they going to use the, the, the name splash as a derogatory term? Like you can't use splash. <laughs> <in any. laughs> like you're on, you're on pirates and like, they're like, oh, is there a drop? And like, yeah, I was going to big splash. No, big splash Racist. is the wrong word. There's a big, Racist big, blasphemy. Big, there's, there's, a, there's a big wall of water, not a splash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. I know you guys uh, spoke about that or the politics. Disney stepping into too much politics on your channel. Yes. What, <laughs> you know, what, what? You, they got to stop that, correct? They have to stop. Oh, they have so to. They already got themselves in so much doo-doo that it's it's like, why? You're an entertainment company. I get that you wanted to have these political figures on your side to will and deal and everything. But honestly, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. you know. And I really feel mm -hmm. that they need to kind of back up some and, and, and kind of – not go that route it's and i think honestly i'm not a 100 percent huge fan of chapek there's some things that you know i don't agree with him on and everything but mm -hmm. i feel that if he was to take this route where he can get out if he could get the company out of the politics red white and blue spotlight <laughs> then mm -hmm. um and kind of move it towards just it being disney then I, you know, I would highly commend him for that because that's a huge step. Because it just shows that when you you deal with that sort of government political way, you know, especially when you're in entertainment, you're 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 cutting yourself short of fans because when you deal with politics, more so, you have the left and you have the right. Mm -hmm. No matter which way you go you're going to be losing 50% of your audience. So mm. when I go to a movie, a Disney movie, I'm not going in the theater and I'm saying, hmm, I wonder how many Republicans are sitting with me. I wonder how many Democrats are sitting <laughs> with me. I wonder how many conservatives are sitting with me. Oh, I wonder how many liberals are sitting with me. I'm not thinking of that. It's just, can we just be a group of a community that we're all in there for one purpose, and that is to be entertained by a Disney film? Let's get back to that. Let that be the demographic. Exactly. And do you think that's why maybe uh, Lightyear flopped with uh, maybe it was too progressive or too focused on, instead of fun, too focused on them? No, I, purposely, I, <laughs> I purposely took myself to see Lightyear in theaters. Actually, the last week mm -hmm. it was in theaters before it came on TV+. <laughs> And and it was for research purposes. I you know I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but mm -hmm. I noticed that it lacked the heart and charm of what Pixar is used to produce. The the, the film, Especially the storyline. Story. Yeah, exactly. The the storyline felt very one sided. The characters mm -hmm. were very stale. You know, there wasn't really too much to go. But it just felt like they just kept on pushing a specific agenda and it kind of mm -hmm. took the forefront of that where it killed the rest of the movie where I think that if they were to have focused more on storyline and character and how to bring more of that Pixar heart to it, then it could have been a very successful film. And 
there and even there's some of it that really doesn't make any sense where it doesn't even tie into the toy store toy story films for instance mm -hmm. uh spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen uh lightyear but i'll just do it anyway when they bring zerg it turns out zerg is an older version of buzz himself okay i'm now, sorry if we go right. back if we go back to toy story 2 wasn't there the joke that Zerg is supposed to be Buzz's father? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, I'll, yeah, it doesn't even make, like, the ride make sense because that means you're busy the whole time shooting yourself. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, like, so, yeah. <laughs> and it also, and there's also a, um, this was back in the early 2000s. I don't know if you ever watched it. It used to be on the Toon Disney channel of the animated Buzz Lightyear series. It was a part two. Seen it. Okay, so yeah, so that's like where he's battling Zerg, you know, in every episode. It's <laughs> like, so now it came to the conclusion that, okay, so in the space-time continuum, if he destroyed Zerg, wouldn't he no longer exist? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was, a little, I was like, what? I was a little disappointed by that uh, reveal. I was like, ooh, who's it? Who's Zerg? Who is Zerg? I'm like, up to you. Oh. Yeah, like, it's like... Yeah. I think honestly, they they weren't really paying attention to storyline and character, and they thought, "Oh, let's just make Zerg buzz," you know, just make it simple. Yeah, like, like uh, weird. So, do you think what you call it? So obviously, it could have been better. But do you also think the forty five day window? Do you think people will just are waiting to some of the, some of these movies because uh, then they know will be on Disney Plus in a month and a half? Well, I think it all depends on the actual film. I think mm -hmm. No Way Home, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, and even uh, Top Gun Maverick has proved that it can make record-shattering profits at the box office. I think it's just more so because if you actually look at what kind of movies No Way Home and Maverick is, there's no specific agenda for them. It's just you're just mm -hmm. going in and you're enjoying the movie and your suspense. It's like, oh, what's going to happen next? How are they going to get out of this situation? That's what an audience wants. They don't want to have this nitpicking type of demographic of saying, okay, in this movie, you're going to see this because of this. And you're going to see this in the movie because of that. They're not going to want to pay the amount of money that it takes to go to a movie theater to, to see that. You know, so me personally, if you were going to do that with a movie like Lightyear, and honestly, even Thor Love and Thunder, that you might as well should just shorten up the time span in the movie theater and then release it right on mm -hmm. Disney+. Plus. Yeah, because then, yeah, then it's, uh, you know, <laughs> they're faster. But, uh, that's, uh, hopefully, hopefully Pixar gets more fun again what do you think about the upcoming strange world movie i don't know too much about it but <laughs> i've uh, seen that i've, I've seen the preview from the yeah. yeah i've seen the preview of it when i went to go see lightyear i have absolutely no appeal to see this movie well i see it yes because for research purposes to really like talk about it mm -hmm. and maybe do a review but to actually for me to say ooh, i want to see this movie i have no no built-up anticipation of any expectations of what this movie yeah. would do. I still don't understand what's supposed to be happening there. I, I've seen the I don't TV think I don't before. think the creators yeah. know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I, the only thing I remember from the previews is uh, a very colorful world, and someone's going to. I think one of them's a doctor, and one's the one of the adventure, but they do, and it's kind of weird. But uh, I right, so. I feel like that movie might, it's coming in November, right? So I feel like it might hurt because yeah. one, no one seems, at least not a lot of people seem to know what's happening. Two, I believe the main character, Ethan, is a like a gay character or something, and that may affect some people. So I feel like, man, we're dizzy. Animation's heading for another bad flop here with strange world yeah i think honestly i think so and i think up until chapek gets a hold of this and kind of reroutes the company mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. that was already in 
pre-production or moving into post-production. Mm, yeah. That has to it's come out happen. first. And then it'll yeah. Be clean stuff. yeah. 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 Be clean. So like, yeah, I feel like really the Chapek stuff, as I think Orange Grove mentioned, but really like 2023 and on will kind of like his movies because this is all stuff that was already greenlit before he came CEO. So makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Uh, but yeah, very interesting. Yeah, you comment down below. Are you excited for Strange World? Even though Strange World is, I feel like a lot of people may not even know what that is. <laughs> because I have only seen it in front of Buzz Lightyear. I haven't seen it in front of Jurassic World or anything else. So I feel like a lot of people don't, haven't even seen the preview yet or even know what that is, which is another reason I feel like maybe we should go straight to Disney+. Plus. Hmm. Hmm, is it too late to pull it? I don't know. Don't know. I, well, they, I do know that they're going to talk about it at the expo as part of the animation presentation. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, depending on how much, because in the animation presentation, they show a lot of behind the scenes and they show stuff mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, you, you won't see, you know, you'll find. Because I remember back at the expo, they showed scenes from Frozen while it was still in mm -hmm. development, you know, so. That's pretty cool. You know, so it, I guess it depends on the audience's reaction to this movie um, mm -hmm. based on what they show at the expo. And then they may say, you know what, it's coming out into theaters in like two months. You know, they're not really happy with it. Let's just put it on Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, guess, uh, I wonder the, yeah, the reactions to the, everything. Um, but I think the biggest audience reaction Oh, I haven't thought about this. Obviously, it was the Magic Key renewal situation. Yes. So, I wonder if they don't announce anything or do anything. I wonder if that'll take over. Well, that's, take well, over that's, the expo. As in, not well, like them announcing, but people booing at everything they announce because they're so mad at their Magic Keys not being announced that they just boo everything at the expo. That'd be insane. But I wouldn't be that, too far that is That is kind of true because if you have the mentality of somebody who wants a magic key and you're going to announce mm. all this great stuff but in order to mm. see said stuff you need a magic key <laughs> you know <so> like <laughs> yeah. in their, you know in their minds but i truly feel like and i could be wrong i've said this from the beginning and i think um you know a lot of people don't agree with me on this but i wonder if they're going to make an announcement of a of a form of a magic key at the expo. And a lot of people say, you know, to the fact of, well, what are people going to do that have the expiration date coming in late August? Well, it's already mid August and we still didn't hear nothing on it. So I think honestly, mm -hmm. for a couple more weeks, I think what they're going to do is just put everything on hold. If you want to go to the parks, buy a base ticket. And then at the expo, they'll announce a new type of system off of the magic keys. Yeah. That can be true, but man, I, I still feel like even if they did that, it wouldn't be favorable to Magic Key. I feel like they'll get a massive boo still. I don't know. Are they that ballsy? Oh, maybe Shapek is. He said they're well, we, you know, well, you know, he's already, he well, he's already <laughs> kind of, he's already kind of taken the cue from me with my beard because he got the, the beard growing. Yeah, so I, know, I think so he funny. may be, yeah. so I think he may be taking my quote going balls to the wall, you know, so I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know what, let me, let me get my beard growing. Let me show these people I'm serious. So when I came in to see you, as a little baby face, I, I'm just literally Duncan. Now I'm growing into the role, literally. <laughs> Absolutely. <sighs> Mr. Chapek, and what, that one time he didn't show up? Oh, I think he'll be showing up this time. He's like, yeah, let them boo me because look at our guest spending and our attendance numbers. They're breaking the charge. So obviously they don't care. They're, they're not that mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We shall so see. So at the expo. There'll be, let's see, there's a, they're talking about movies, the animation. Oh, the one big thing of the expo, it's obviously very important to theme park people and Disney people like all of us. It's the 100th anniversary celebration. Mm -hmm. What do you think this will be consisting of? It's well, and that's the other thing. Well, and that's the other thing, too, because Chapek had made the, the statement when they first made the announcement that this is going to kick off 
the uh, the next 100 years. So that's what basically this is. We are celebrating the first 100 years of the company, but more importantly, moving into the next 100 years. And he made that very clearly uh, in his statement. So the title of the parks panel is called boundless future. Mm -hmm. So when you're taking a subject matter, when you're talking about the 100 years of the company moving forward to the next 100 years, titling Mm -hmm. something for the parks division, boundless future. And then a couple, a a month, right before you have the expo, you invest in $6 billion. I think that they're going to go, and I'm going to use my term, they're going to go balls to the wall on it. I think that they're going to show... Balls to the wall. (laughs) I think that they're going to showcase a lot of, I would hope so, that they would showcase a lot of the Disney history, you know, of how the company came to be. Um, I would love to see a lot of exhibits on the showroom floor, you know, where it talks about maybe... um, the old classic black and white Mickey Mouse cartoons, the Oswald, the Lucky Rabbit cartoons, hell, even the uh, Alice comedies, you know, when it was, it was the Disney Brothers Studios before it was titled the Walt Disney Mm -hmm. Company. You know, I would love to see that journey that Walt took, you know, that brought it us to this point. And of course they are bringing his plane to the expo. So I'm very excited to see where they're going to place that. And I hope that they have a photo opportunity because I would love to have my picture taken with his plane. That would be nice. But, uh, and hopefully they bring back in, on July 17th his opening day speech. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it would be kind of nice being that they did not add that to the Disneyland <laughs> birthday. Why not actually showcase it as part of the expo? You know? Mm-hmm. His opening day speech. <laughs> we'll have that one. <laughs> we shall oh, see on that one. Boy. I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious to see what it's gonna what it's gonna be like for the next birthday of Disneyland. Because if it shows up, mm-hmm. they had every intention of not playing it, and because of the uproar on social media, that they'll bring it back. Mm-hmm. Now, what if it doesn't show up again? then it would really confirm that they are really trying to take the Walt out of Walt Disney. The Walt out of Disney, which to me is, and and there's rumors flying around that that's what they're trying to do with Walt Disney World. They're trying to take the Walt part out and it just be called Disney World (laughs) because the whole reason why they called it Walt Disney World was because of his honor after he passed that they had mm-hmm. promised that it would be titled Walt Disney World. And I think that would be such a slap in the face and an insult to the founder, the creator, who practically gave them their jobs. <laughs> and they're mm-hmm. turning their back on him and changing it to what they want. And it's not what – it should be not what they want. It should be what he wants. You know, he's the pioneer. You know, they should follow the philosophy and tradition of Walt himself. I 100% agree. Hopefully they don't change the name because, I mean, I think that's just silly. And me, I would always title it as Walt Disney World. It'll always be Walt Disney World to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, that's something. I feel like even if it changed the name, no one would actually call it something different because, hello, it's Walt Disney World. WDW. Hello. Man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's WDW. Like super silly, and then and then they have to change all the signage. That's a lot of money to do anyway. Yeah, I'm sure they don't want to spend that. Like man, yeah. And luckily, well, so far, this is just rumors swirling around. So yeah, you know, it's funny. That's just I rumors. haven't even heard that until I saw Benchy. I'm like, oh wow, this is actually a thing. I don't know who started that thing because weird. Like who? Yeah. Is so weird. Yeah. Very strange. Um, so you'll be here next year, next month. Next month, I will be on location, and uh, as soon as I get any uh, information out, I'm you know hitting social media, and we're going to get out some content of you know. Hopefully, it'll be some nice, sweet, juicy, but again, sticky Disney news and info. <laughs> sticky Disney, and how how many days going to be here? I you will said, be. 
for a week? I should be. It should be ten days altogether. Ten days. Yeah. Oh no 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 no, George. One of those days you're coming up to Halloween Horror Nights. Okay. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. What are you saying? What's that? Where are you staying? I'm staying. Um, I forgot. I forget the name of the the hotel, but it's off of a uh, Catella. Because I'm I'm staying closer to the I'm staying closer to the convention center, yes. so that way I can get up early and just kind of like make my way. Who are you going with? And you're going by yourself? Or meeting I'm anybody? going. No, I'm. Uh, Mindy will be joining me uh, for the expo. And then I'm going to meet uh, Mr. Vash Sky, um, I believe, for the Oogie Boogie Bash. Well, you, Mr. Vash Guy, and Mr. Orange Grove, you're coming up to Horror Nights <laughs> right on one of those weekends. You're doing it whether you like it or not, Mr. Ford. <laughs> you're doing it whether you like it or not. And you'll be right here back on this channel at Four nights, <laughs> September. It's the opening weekend too. September. Or oh, now she said, "Will you be here September 8th? Yes, but I'll be in Disneyland for uh, Disney Plus Day. Perfect. So September eighth at about seven p.m. You're coming to Universal, and we're going to Horror Nights. <laughs> <laughs> now that's another thing too. I I have not experienced Universal Hollywood yet, so I am very curious to uh, more so out of everything. Believe it or not, is experience the tram tour. I would love to experience the. You're gonna love it. It's gonna be great, and you'll do it in just a month, which is be great. <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be the most exciting thing ever. It's gonna be. You're gonna be right here. You have to. You have to. You have to. I will do my best. <laughs> Good. And oh, and with that, thank you for joining me, George. It was always a fun conversation yes. with Disney, Daphne. Tell everyone once again where they can find you, Mister Citrus Corn. Absolutely. You can find me on my YouTube channel, Disney Family Man 23. You can interact with me on Twitter at Disney George. And of course, you'll also find me on Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with a lot of sweet, juicy, but yet sometimes sticky Disney news and info. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to thank you, you Mr. Theme Park. Yeah. <laughs> and I do want to thank you, Mr. Theme Park Wizard, for having me on. This was great. Oh, it's going to be great. And you can find me here on Theme Park Wizard. And and you can press subscribe, buy some cool merchandise, and subscribe, especially if you want to see George experience his first time at Halloween Horror Nights on September 8th. That's going to be quite a show. <laughs> and as always, have a fantastic day. Oh, George, we're